Welcome back, everyone. It's the Bourbon Judge. Hey, this is my favorite episode of the year. Woo! I love myself in my top 10 episode. Always fun. It's always just kind of cool to look back to see all the whiskeys that you're like, damn, these were phenomenal. But before we get started, we got a couple of housekeeping things. Uh, first and foremost, I um, want to go ahead and welcome, welcome my newest patron, my buddy Oscar S. So Oscar, thanks for supporting the Bourbon Judge, as well as for all my patrons. We honestly, in 2022, had a blast. We had, um, you know, obviously numerous live streams. We had a live streams with like tons of giveaways. Um, we have our obviously of course our normal contest on discord we go back and forth you know just kind of sharing what everyone's drinking there's obviously we love the whiskey community so a lot of people maybe that are looking for certain bottles they can trade bottles so we really have a it's like a, we're like a little family the, the judge family if you will so uh definitely go ahead and check us out over on um over on patreon and we also had our first ever fantasy football league and uh, i donated a bottle of course some other people donated bottles as well so we had a blast so definitely go ahead and check us out over on patreon uh, membership starts with uh, tier start at three dollars and kind of go from there and then speaking of patrons so in 2022 i did my first barrel pick which was the woodenville pick absolutely amazing there still are a couple bottles left over over a kegan bottle i'll put the link in this episode so make sure you check that out and uh, speaking of uh, my patrons and, you know, barrel picks, so in 2023, I am actually going to be working with a few different channels. We're going to partner together along with some of our patrons also and get some uh, some new barrel picks in the mix. So uh, be on the lookout for my patrons. Uh, like I said, I'm working with my um, with other uh, whiskey tubers. We're going to have a little, a little collaboration in 2023 and have some fun. Cool? All right. So as you see, I'm sipping another housekeeping thing. I'm sipping out of my uh, my little mini glens, if you will. So I know a lot of uh, folks have reached out. These are definitely still available. Two for $35. That also includes shipping. Just shoot me an email and uh, I'll get a set of, set of these out to you if you're interested in the uh, the mini glens. All right. We are ready to dive in the top 10. Oh, oh, oh. All right. So before we dive in, I'm going to say a couple of things. Number one, how did I come up with this list? So these are all bottles that, first and foremost, that I just flat out loved in 2022. I mean, I absolutely just straight up love them. But I also want to be mindful of, you're not going to see any B-Tech. No William Lou Weller, no Stag, no Eagle Rare. None of that stuff is going to be in this uh, top 10. Also, no Pappy. I don't go there, so that's not going to happen either. And you're not going to see even like King of Kentucky. None of that nonsense. So I didn't want to put any of those bottles in there because honestly, the common person, man, woman, whatever, most of us really can't get those bottles. So I don't want to put those in the in the episode. These, in my opinion, are top 10 whiskeys that I think are just flat out amazing. I don't care what the label says. Uh, they're just great juice. And most importantly, you can find them. You definitely have to do a little bit of hunting. I'm not saying these are going to be like on the shelf easily, but you definitely have to do a little bit of hunting, but at least you can find them. And even if they are marked up a little bit, they might, they're not going to be as much as like a, a BTAC or a Pappy or none of that nonsense. They're, they're going to be somewhat priced normal for the most part. Uh, but I want to go ahead and kick it off with a few honorable mentions. All right. So the honorable mentions are going to be a combination of either A, they were super highly allocated, so I didn't want to include them. B, they were really good, but I just, you know, it just didn't make my top 10. And they just didn't, they didn't really do it for me as a whole in terms of getting to the top 10. But the whiskey was great. Cool. All right. So the first uh, honorable mention goes to Russell's Reserve 13. That was a fantastic pour. I mean, it's a great bottle. Just so hard to get. And I, even myself, I've never seen it at MSRP. So it's super highly allocated uh, and just way, way too expensive. But I did love it, though. Next, uh, Sagamore Sherry. Fantastic juice. Absolutely amazing. I love what Sagamore Spirits is uh, putting out. I really enjoyed that sherry, uh, that sherry finished uh, rye. Absolutely amazing, uh, great quality whiskey. Just didn't make it my top 10, but great whiskey as a whole. Next, Heaven Hill 17. <laughs> that is a treat, but you wanna talk about highly allocated. That's like just through the roof. So I just couldn't go there to put it in my top 10, but I did wanna call it out that it was really good whiskey. Next, two to go, Barrel Batch 33. Probably one of my favorite barrel products straight up ever. Barrel Batch 33. Fruity, sweet, delicious, just absolutely amazing quality whiskey. That was very close to being in the top 10, but it just didn't, just didn't get there. Really, really close. And last but not least, the last honorable mention, of course, come on, has to be my own barrel pick. All jokes aside, this Woodenville pick, I, it's called, we, we named it, myself and my patrons, we called it the, the Spicy Bee's Knees. 
It tastes like a normal Woodville product, but slightly different. It almost tastes like it has a honey finish to it. It is flat out amazing. I had numerous subscribers reach out to me and they're like, hey Judge, this bottle, your barrel pick, was absolutely fantastic. And honestly, it really is. It is great. This is like, I think my third bottle of it that I'm on. Of course, got a couple bunkered away as well. I'll, again, I'll put the link in this episode to Keg and Bottle. So in case you want to grab a bottle of that, I highly recommend you uh, grab one of those bad boys. All right, going into my top 10. So I'm going to dive into my top 10. I'm going to explain the reason why I chose it, the MSRP and the availability, like how much hunting do you have to do for them and so forth. Cool? All right. Coming with number 10. <laughs> number 10. All right. So this whiskey, I was impressed last year with the, the, the I guess, the last version of it. And then this year's version, I thought just picked it right where last year's left off. Sweet, fruity, tons of banana notes. Um, MSRP about $140. But you honestly can find this in multiple states. I mean, I've never heard someone say, Judge, this is so hard to find. And even though it's a little bit more expensive, $140, at least you can find it. And they're typically never marked up more than above and beyond the MSRP, $140. Absolutely amazing whiskey. Uh, coming in at 106 proof, Calumet 16, age 16 years. This is a fantastic bottle. As you can tell, I'm almost done with it. My friends have came over, the guys I hang out with, we smoke cigars. They love this just as much as I do. I think this is one of the best products out there. Hence, it's number 10 on my list. And it's absolutely fantastic. Oh, Calumet 16 was a home run. Picked it right with 15 left off. All right, that's number 10. Going to number nine. Oh man, probably my favorite. Well, if I get this way, my favorite honey finished whiskey on the market. Also about $140. Slightly harder to find, um, but again, typically not really marked up. You can even get them online in a lot of different places. So if you can get it online, it's not that hard. You just got to search online, but you can find it online. Again, for about $140. Absolutely, the, in my opinion, the best honey finished whiskey out there. This is Nulu Honey. Ugh. This, again, goes great neat. It goes great with a cigar. It is just flat out amazing. I love myself some Nulu Honey. I think it's probably the best honey finished whiskey out there, hands down. The uh, honey and the whiskey, they blend, the bourbon, they blend in so well together. Neither one kind of takes over. It's a perfect blend, literally a perfect marriage, if there is such a thing. <laughs> All right, that's number nine. Coming in the eighth spot. Whoa, so these are three in a row, about the same price one. Coming in the number eight spot. Came out this year. I didn't know if I was going to, I knew I was going to like it, but I didn't know if I was going to love it. That's a complete different story. And when I sip this, it's tons of what you would, what you would imagine. Tons of oak, tons of like um, peanuts, tons of like strawberry notes, very oak forward, also at about $140, but you can still find these with a little bit of honey. You can definitely still find them. I saw them out myself even last week when I was out hunting. Knob Creek 18. This bottle is straight up the truth. It is just, it's a fantastic experience. I mean, that's, it's an experience. It's like going on a vacation. It's going to take you through a lot of different emotions when you sit this bad boy, but it is truly worth it each and every day. Again, a buck 40, but you can find it with a little bit of hunting, which is cool. And it's not going to be marked up to like a BTAC level or Pappy level. It's not like that. Even if it is marked up, maybe it goes from 140 to 200 or 210, but you can at least still find it at somewhat of a reasonable price for a fantastic whiskey. My number eight. All right, man, my number seven. This is a brand that I think they do a great job of taking source whiskey, tweaking it, making it better than it originally was. So coming in number seven, by far, uh, again, this bottle, a little bit more expensive, about 200 bucks, but at least you can get it online. There's no hunting. You can go directly, in most cases, to places like Sealbox uh, or Bourbon Outfitters, various different places, and you can find it online and get it shipped to your house. There's no hunting for it, honestly. It's fantastic. Whiskey costs a little bit more, but this was literally my favorite release of theirs in 2022. None other than Fourgate, the Kelvin collaboration number four. Woo! This I loved so many reasons. As it says here, a blend, straight blend of bourbon and straight rye, finished in Australian tawny port and Barbadian dark rum cast. Bob and the team over at Fourgate, they know how to take some good whiskey and make it way better than what, what it originally was. I love the blends, I love the different finishes that Fourgate does. And this Kelvin collab number four was, woo, 
<laughs> number seven is my favorite number. So this holds a special place in my heart. Love this bottle all day, every day. All right, coming in the number six spot. Whew. This brand, this brand just speaks about, it speaks to just everything that they put out for the most part is absolutely phenomenal. I love their, um, everything always has like a very nice toasted note to it across the board. So coming in the number six spot, by far, this is my favorite, my number one rye for 2021 last year. This year overall is my number six product as a whole. I've blended it together. This year, just one list. Michter's Barrel Strength Rye. Oh, gosh. I can't even talk about it because I get emotional. <laughs> Michter's is my number six uh, favorite whiskey of this year. It's a rye. It is flat out amazing. I love the toasted notes. I love the marshmallow, like the cinnamon, the caramel. It is just fantastic. It's my favorite rye, hands down. I love this bottle, as you can tell. And I actually think this is my second bottle of it, which is kind of concerning, but <laughs> I do love it big time. All right, before I get to the, the first five, uh, real quick, three quick easy favors. Number one, hit the like button. Number two, drop me a comment. Let me know what were some of your favorite whiskeys. What are your, like, your top 10 or just your favorite like three or four in 2022? Last but not least, come on, hit that subscribe button. Hook a brother up. Cool? All right. I'm going to go ahead and sip. And by the way, I'm sipping and enjoying number one. Of course. Mm. Oh, my gosh. That's so damn good. Woo! Wait till we get to number one. It's going to be a surprise for you. All right. Coming in number five. I'm a big fan of this brand. Uh, I think all of their collaborations that they've done in the past have been always really, really good. But this version of the Discovery Series, yes, it's Barstown Bourbon Company. Discovery Series, which one is it, Judge? Number eight. This, in my opinion, is flat out the truth. I absolutely love this. It's earthy, it's sweet, it's caramel, it's leather, it's fruit, it's everything. It is flat out everything. This is hands down my number five. Oh man, it's so great. I will say, before I get to the first four, when I went through this list, I went through, you know, my favorite whiskeys as a whole, like the top, like 15, 20, kind of narrowed it down, and I went one by one. It was a very tedious job, but somebody had to do it. So when I say the proof is in the pudding, I tasted all these kind of side by side, ranked them in order, and that's how I got my list as well. This was absolutely fantastic, though. Bar Sound Disco number eight, in my opinion, was better than number nine. This is my favorite disco ever. Forever, ever, forever, ever. <laughs> <laughs> Love me some bars down, uh, disco number eight. All right, that is the number five. Now we are getting close to the end of the road. Oh man, coming in the number four spot. This probably was my biggest surprise of the year, only because I've always felt like all of their other special, I'm gonna say special releases in years past, I've always thought were really, really good, but none before would ever crack my top 10. Just being honest with you. But for this one, this is the uh, 2022 Woodford Reserve Masters Collection coming in at 118.4 proof. This bottle surprised the hell out of me. It's, it's, it's just everything. Maple syrup, leather, caramel, just cinnamon. It's so deep, it's so rich. It is just, oh, it's amazing. It's flat out amazing. This bottle, again, $140. Kind of like Bar Sound, another $140 bottle. Fantastic quality. But what I like about the Bar Sound as well as the Woodford, again, you can find these bottles. You can find them. You might have to go to a few different stores or even ask a friend, but you can definitely find these bottles. Both of these. You can, I mean, I saw this just last week when I was uh, looking around. I saw this one here. I still see Disco 8 around. You can find these bottles. A little bit more expensive at $140, but they're typically not mark, par marked up past like $200 or something in that range. So, again, Fantastic quality whiskey, one that I think was just flat out amazing. All right, now we're going to my number three. The number three whiskey is not just so much this batch, it's the entire brand, this version of the brand. And I'm gonna say, this is one of my hands down most consistent brands that never disappoints, always love it. This is batch 85, and while it comes in 150, $160, Every single batch that I've ever had, flat out amazing. 
none other than Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend. Oh, bourbon whiskey finished in Armiac, Sherry, and Cognac. Come on, stop it. Stop it, stop it. Nancy the Nose Fraley, she, she blends for a lot of different companies, but of the all the ones that she blends for, this by far is number one. Hands down, nothing even close to it. I love what Nancy does with this. Each and every batch, again, this is batch 85, but I'm saying Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend, period. I'll take any batch. I love what Nancy's doing with Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend. Again, like $150 bottle, so a little bit more expensive. But what I like about this is two things. Number one, consistency. Number two, Nancy, uh, I talked to her. She reached out. She said, Judge, going forward, my products will be more readily available. Not just sitting on the shelves like everywhere, but if you hunt, you do a little bit of searching, ask a friend, you can find it. And I will say, I used to only see Joseph Magnus maybe once a year. I now see it like almost like at least once or twice every quarter. So I'm starting to see it a lot more in the Northeast. And that makes me a happy judge every day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend number three. Oh man, we are getting down to number two and number one. Number two whiskey, I did not have a chance to review it. So actually, I'm not even going to go into too much depth on it. I'm going to do a special review for number two only because I just got this bottle for Christmas. And honestly, Mrs. Judge came through. So I did not expect to get this bottle. This is, of all these, is probably the the highest from an allocation standpoint and might be marked with the most. So don't kill me. Don't kill me. <laughs> but I will say this whiskey coming in number two, absolutely amazing. It's just, oh my gosh. I sipped this on Christmas night and I was like, Mrs. Judge, you've done well. You've done well. A little bit more expensive. MSRP on this is about, uh, let's call it a buck 30 ish, buck 40. Um, but it's absolutely amazing. This is the only one that if you do find it in the store, it's probably going to be marked up to like four or $500, unfortunately. But this whiskey is flat out ridiculously great. And again, I'll do a special review coming up to kind of detail everything about it. The brand new Parker's Heritage Double Barrel Blend. So this is essentially a blend of 13 year old and 15 year old whiskey that's double barreled. I'll get into all the specifics coming up very soon in that next episode. Absolutely amazing by far. Second best whiskey I had all year. All right. Number one. Drum roll. Hit him. Mm. Woo. So number one is also a $140 bottle. Um, I have had other expressions of their whiskey before, and they've always been either good. There was another one that's actually great. But when I had this bottle, age 14 years, I did a, like I literally jumped up, clapped, and I like turned around. I was like just shocked how great this whiskey is. Even better than the Parker's, at least for me and me personally. This is the best bottle I have all year, have had all year. Now I will say harder to find, but I've seen it actually online. I think even at Stillbox once, and I've definitely seen it out in the wild in New Jersey, uh, in Delaware, in Maryland as well. Flat out amazing. Cast strength coming in age 14 years from Lucky7, the proprietor. Yes, I said it. This bad boy right here, the proprietor, age 14 years, a single barrel. So they're they're taking source whiskey. I believe this is they're sourcing it uh, from what everyone knows from Bart in 1792 age 14 years so it's basically like a cali mint but cast strength and when i tell you this bottle is special it's everything cali mint is times 10. it is flat out ridiculous amazing just amazing the bottle i have comes in 130.5 proof this is barrel number 35. this whiskey oh just it's just drop the mic good hey friends this upcoming year, uh, make sure you uh, check me out. I'm going to change things up a little bit. Just do a little different things in 2023. I appreciate all the love, all the support. If you see any of these, and especially this bad boy here, make sure you grab it. All right, my friends. Peace, cheers. Most importantly, salute.